A very common question that you can find all over the internet on YouTube, on Google is how to attract more clients? How do you attract more customers? And really does word of mouth work? Well, my name is Desmond Soon and this is Josh Sproul. He's the founder of Sproul & Associates. And combined together, we have over 56 years of business experience as business consultants. We've been entrepreneurs, we've had businesses, we've lost businesses on the verge of bankruptcy and brought ourselves back out from the, from the, the death valley. And now what we're doing, we're very passionate about helping business owners beat the odds. In fact, Josh is very passionate about helping Canadian business owners, North American business owners, any business owner to want to scale their business and not be in that 96%. I'm sure you heard about the statistics that 96% of businesses fail. You don't want to be one of those. So stick on all the way to the end of the video or go check out our other playlist videos here where we cover over 100 topics that these are the common mistakes, the myths that business owners make. They believe these myths and really what Josh is here to do is to share with you the real truth because he's actually worked with hundreds of, if not thousands of business owners. So Josh, when we hear, you know, how do I attract customers? The, does this word of mouth work? You know, is, is it a yes or no? Is it a black and white thing? Or is there something deeper behind it? I, I think like word of mouth marketing, there's some sort of like intrinsic, like that is the right way. The, the John Wayne do, <laughs> way of doing business that every successful company who's really good doesn't have to market at all. The phone just magically I, rings. I come from that world, right? You know, a lot of salespeople, ext ext uh, extroverts like myself will, will, you know, I have a lot of network, I have a lot of referrals, yeah. um, but is it scalable? Is, is you know, or do, should I be doing something else? The stats tell you that that's actually wrong, right? Really? The stats yeah. actually say that, you know, 63% of all companies who grow their revenue do so by increasing their online ad spend. Right. So, you know, when we take the feelings, and our goal is always to take the feelings, how do we feel we should do it, and replace it with the actual numbers on if you do this. Remember, our goal is to make these business owners like the card counters at the blackjack table, right? We're yeah. not playing the casino slot machine anymore. We're just playing the same boring hand over and over again at the blackjack because table. Because it's predictable, right? Because it will win, right? Right. If we eventually do it, right? And so, if you want to grow your revenue, you're going to have to increase your online ad spend. And, and I want to tell you how to spot these frauds because they will tell you yes. that they grow their business by word of mouth marketing alone, right? Right. They're usually sitting there at, uh, they tell you this when they show up to their house and you peek outside your window and you look at the truck that they're driving yeah. and it has a $5,000 auto wrap on the truck. It was like, well, why did you spend $5,000 on your auto wrap if it builds by word of mouth alone? Nobody right. would need it, right? That's advertising right there, yeah. Then you log into their website and they've clearly paid a professional programmer tens of thousands of dollars to build this thing out. Yeah, and SEO and everything else. Probably even says at the top of the website, a business built on word of mouth, right? Yeah. But meanwhile, they've stuck it on a website, right? Right. Um, so I, I'm not telling that word of mouth isn't important, that we shouldn't actually have a certain percentage of our customers that come from referrals. Yeah, it's like icing in the cake though, but you should not make it a pillar of your business, right? Correct, correct. Okay. But if, if you want to grow at scale, you're going to have to do more than word of mouth. You're going to have to do paid advertising. Correct, yeah. Right? Uh, it's, a, it's just a statistical fact. You just look at the biggest companies in the world. You, you start looking at the, the, the Disney's and the Nike's and they spend you know, billions of dollars They in don't need to, but they still do, yeah. They still do it, right? Right. And so these business owners, they're stuck thinking that they're doing something wrong. Yeah. When really they were just taught wrong from the beginning, right? What, what about um, you know where I find I hear word of mouth comes in the most are people like in network marketing, uh, people who uh, you know they attend networking events like an insurance agent, real estate agents. Yeah. Um, what would you say? What's you know I mean are they quite considered a business owner? Are they more of a, a consultant? Are they uh, self-employed? Um, and then for them they're saying hey I I, I tend to you know I get referrals I get a lot yeah. of word of mouth. Take a look around in that networking event. Yep. and tell me who in that event has more than five employees, who's been around for longer than 10 years, has more than five full-time employees. Yep. You're gonna start to see a room of you know, 30, 40, 50 people, yep. and maybe one or two of them have an actual business that's been around for longer than 10 years with more than five full-time employees, right? right? Some of them might be, more likely that they'll be an employee in that business they sent there, right? Correct. Is the actual business owner in charge of that business there? Probably not, right? right? But that business owner probably has a good idea on what their online ad spend was, right? Right. Uh, they understand what it takes to be a scalable business. In fact, word of mouth, mar word of mouth marketing and advertising, those clients that come in, they're more likely to convert with effective marketing. 
Correct. Right? Yeah. I Social mean, proof, marketing, yeah. Eighty eight percent of the time when someone, you know, does business, mm -hmm. you know, does business with you, they likely Googled you first, right? Correct. So they you know, Susan got the referral from Sally. Yeah. Susan still likely Googled the company 88% of the time, right? right? So what we want is we want to get that re we want to get that referral, and then when she logs in to check, we want to see that social proof. We want her being retargeted with the ad over yeah. and over because the so average person seven times, yeah. has to see it. You know, 4.3 times, right? Yeah. It will magnify the effect of word of mouth marketing. Right? Right. So it's not one or the other. Yeah. It's just eventually we have to sell. Uh, to people who are outside of our network, right? Yeah. And our ability to even capitalize on those referrals is intrinsically tied to our paid advertising. Why stage. do you think? Why do you think business owners, um, you know, gravitate to just the word of mouth? Is it because is it a, a self confidence issue? Is it a maybe they just don't know marketing at all? They don't know where to start or who to ask. We were taught at a very early age that a penny saved is a penny earned. Right. Right. And, and I, hate, I hate that phrase. And as soon as you pay money to, for something, you are doing something intrinsically wrong. Yeah. So we're always, you know, trying to find a way to justify that fallacy. Right. right. And so when it comes to the difference between someone will give me a referral for free. Or some, I will reach out and pay someone to put this in front of a number of eyeballs. Our value system from when we were a little kid was taught to save money. Will naturally gravitate to the towards the other one, even yeah. though there is no statistical evidence to support that theory. None, you know. And all of the big guys who succeed know this, and all of the small guys, you know, expect to live that sort of, you know, uh, you know, uh, live that sort of false truth. Like yes. they're going to get crushed by it. Okay. Um, by the way, there's a great quote here in your book here, Josh, where you, you, you mentioned Seth Godin. Uh, Seth, by the way, is a great guy. Check out his channel. One of the most phenomenal speakers and, and uh, entrepreneurs out there. But he wrote, build it and they will come only works in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've all heard that. Build it and they will come. Build a website and they will come. Right? Yeah. Uh, go to the network event and they will come. No, no, it just doesn't work that way. You actually have, a, have to have a strategic plan. Now, Josh, you also own multiple companies and one of your sister companies is a marketing company in which you show and help the yes. business owners that we do business consultations with how to grow and scale their paid marketing. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that as well too? I, I mean, you got to think about like your paid marketing. We do it at Inspired Method Marketing and Coaching. You know, we're launching Google search ads and we're launching ad road targeting ads and we're launching Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, it talks about like word of mouth. Like for example, uh, last week at yeah. Spurl and Associates, I know that our paid ads had more than 200,000 impressions. Wow, that's a lot. 200,000 impressions. Yeah, how right? much did you spend to do that? I, I mean, and we're spending thousands of dollars to do that, Correct. right? Yeah. And that's, I'm not talking that happened in a year, I'm talking that happened in a week. Yeah. Every yeah. single week there's But that's two, also why your calendar is fully booked, right? Over 200,000 impressions for yeah. that to happen, right? Yeah. You gotta think about, imagine if you're a small business, and if you're a small business, you're just starting out, and you've only done business with a couple of dozen people. Yeah. Even if they tell every single person who they know you about you. You'll never reach 200,000. You'll never even come close to the scale, right? Yeah. Plus a lot of the businesses that we're doing, maybe you're an exterminator, right? Yeah. Well, your exterminator, you, the person that you did the work for, you know, they probably have, you know, 20 or 30 people in their network. Yeah. Do all of them also have a mouse problem at that point in time? No. Right. Yeah. Even if someone has that problem in their network, it's three years from now, they've probably forgotten your name by that time. We leave busy lives. It's, right. it's just not the way that it works, regardless of the quality of the work that you do. Your goal is to get in front of many eyeballs as possible, preferably in the moment where they're making their buying decision. Right? Should every marketing dollar give you a return, Josh? This is, I think, another fallacy that I hear because I see clients, they get really nervous, they put a little bit of money in for a week and they don't get an immediate result and they panic. They're like, oh, I'm going broke, I'm, I'm digging to my, my pockets here and having to, to pay for ads that I don't see an instant result on. Well, what's your, what's your uh, take on that? I would say it's going to take you probably a year to really truly understand a most year. business. So make sure you have a budget. A year. A lot of businesses are seasonal, right? Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, we do this in like a, a dental clinic, for example, mm -hmm. right? But we know that people will tend to book in December when their benefits are about to run out, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, even though, so if we make a change to the marketing in August and compare it to, you know, what's going to happen coming up, we don't actually know how that's going to how that's gonna pay off, if we're gonna buy this radio spot and let it run for a while, we don't really know. So we have to be really concerned about, we, we wanna turn
turn dials, and ideally we're turning dials one at a time. Not we're turning three or four dials yeah, at once. Yeah, you don't know where the results then came we from. we've got to change and we don't know which one happened. Right. right? Because asking business, asking customers, you know, how they came into your business, I tell people it's like asking people, you know, what did you see after the car went out of control? Well, you saw a whole bunch of stuff. It was spinning around everywhere, right? And when the customer comes in, they call on the phone, they could tell you, they, they saw your search ad, or they saw your website, or they saw your map list thing. It's like, it doesn't matter, it came from online. And chances are they probably saw three or four different instances of it. Right, right. they saw enough times that then they finally it clicked and they're like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna make this call. That's right. So, so what's what's an action item for the business owner? Remember, the name of the game is to implement here, not just to watch the videos. We'd love to give you a shout out if you actually implement anything from any one of these videos that we have in our video series here. And if you do, we may pin your question, you know, like you'll write in the comments here, we'll pin it or maybe even perhaps bring you out in a future video Video when we do that and allow you to share your story of what you implement. Josh, what is an action item for business owners right now? When they say, I want to attract more customers, they've heard a lot of great stuff today, but let's break it down. Something very simple, three things that they need to do to go and actually implement and get a result. They need to start paying for Google search ads okay. as soon as humanly possible in most businesses, okay. right? And it doesn't have to be very much, right? They need a minimal viable website, mm -hmm. okay? with a call to action. Okay, we called it a no-brainer offer. Okay. Yeah. So something that they funnel Even a one-pager, right? They don't need a fancy six-page, ten-page. Even a one-page, you know, a better website is better, but yeah. you, you have to get there like your life depends on it. Imagine as a, you're a drywaller. Right now, you don't have a website and ads running into that website oh, with man. an attractive offer. It's, it's kind of like you're walking to your job with your tools every day. Correct. This is what you're doing in your business, yeah. right? It, it's it, it, it's so inefficient that it's 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 kind of ridiculous in this day and age when you just start to see the analytics yeah. on the back end. So don't go waste money on a ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar website that takes six months to build. Just get something up and running. Get some Google ads running to it. What else? You got to get those Google ads running up into it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we got to start gathering some social proof. Right. Okay. What do you mean by social proof? Social proof in terms of Google reviews and video testimonials. Okay. Okay. We need to gather Google reviews and video testimonials. Why is it so important to get Google reviews then? They're going to dramatically increase the conversion on those ads. You know, if people see social proof, they're more likely to pick up the phone. They're more likely to trust you when you tell them what the fair price is. Um, and actually, Google will actually sell you the advertising space for cheaper, the higher your reputation score is. Oh, really? You okay. get more Google reviews, that same ad space is going to be shown to more people because Google wants reputable advertisers to be getting top place. Is there a system. secret threshold, a certain number of reviews? Is there a secret recipe on how to get reviews? We tell people 40. Yes, so 40 is, you know, the average company on planet Earth has 39 reviews. And when you get to 40, Google starts to realize it's probably not just your mom and your sister giving you reviews anymore. You're probably getting it from real yeah. paying customers. You don't, don't have like two right? or three accounts that you actually went and gave yourself a review. Yeah, it's not a, not a scalable activity, no. right? Um, so you really want to you know try to get everything you can to get those forty reviews. But you know people think about oh, I'll launch a website two or three years after your business. It's literally like you are walking to the job sites for two or three years, right? Right, right. You don't really have a business until you have ads funneling into an offer, a scalable way to attract customers. Well. Hopefully that video gave you some ideas and action tips that you can actually go. If you wanna ask any follow-up questions to Josh or myself, feel free to do so. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss all these videos coming out. We've got a hundred videos to share with you. We've got some that are already up here and we've got more coming out. We'll see you in the next video.